Hi, we're back at Pyramid Lake in Nevada. Uh, getting the hot and cutthroat trout. Uh, we did more trolling this time. We're using uh, flatfish. So we're going to show you some techniques that uh, work on that application. Hope you enjoy. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. That ought to wake him up. Can't get prettier than this. This is Anaho Island. It's a rookery island. You got to keep off the coast. That's right where you are, right behind the boat. Behind our lures. Yep. Because it's uh, just full of pelicans. There's some cormorant on the rock there. This whole hillside will just be full of pelicans in the spring. They'll rooker, they'll eat these fish, they'll go back to the ocean. That's where they are now, where it's nice. You know winter's coming. A few stragglers. Not seeing any birds in here. Uh, there's some on the point. It looks like a grebe, western grebe, and a grebe is a fishing bird. It will be diving and feeding, looking for the same thing we are. Uh, and they are out there. They'd be here if there was bait. Oh, here we go. Outside we got some grebes. So we got the grebes out there, popping on the water. That's right where we were marking those fish. Yeah, they're not screaming at each other, so they're not uh, active. But they're uh, waiting for the sun to come up so they can see what they're doing underwater. I think is what's going on. But what do I know? I'm no ornithologist. But I play one on television. Sky rats, the seagulls are here. Used to be the old ocean to come into here. This is the remnants of the inland sea. Yeah, deep. Having a sender here that we use. If we get a fish that's bloated, clip that in and we can send them down and release the air bladder. We can do a film of that later. Okay, Gary's got one. Deep. We're gonna hit the idle button. I'm gonna go over here and get his other line out of the water. This serves two purposes. I can get one of his things out of the water so he's not catching more fish than I do, is the main thing. Get the bait out of here so he doesn't run into it. Yeah, it gives me something to do so I don't get agitated. And him catching all the fish. That's it. There's a lot of things that are good about this. Okay. I notice how I cut his line while he was busy. He does it all the time. Looking at something else. He does it to me all the time. Now he's gonna lose he's gonna lose that fish. And the lure. Okay. This is his net. Okay, we will turn a little into his fish. He's gonna make a dollar on this. This is a big deal because he's gonna there's a dollar involved. See how he's playing this out like it's Mothra down there. Looks like a nice fish. There's color. Yeah, it's a slot, but nice fish. Now you can. These rubber nets are really essential on these fish to keep them from getting damaged. Here's the uh, flatfish that we were using. You can see the little. Uh, uh, I've got a uh, swivel on there. It helps us troll faster, or be able to troll faster with that bait, and uh, that makes a huge difference on getting them. You can see the length of the leader. And then we've got a little rotary dodger on there to uh, as much as anything, it puts some vibration in the water, but it also, uh, we had some weeds in the area, so that helped kind of keep those off the lure. It works good. 
you can see how erratic the uh, lure is, the flatfish are 1.9 to 2.3. You're fishing fairly fast, faster than what they recommend. And the pearl swivel makes that happen, and you can see the fish was uh, enticed and hit it hard. Okay, so unlike Gary's fish, this one's taking line. Now, now. <laughs> Yeah, some competition. We need some numbers in the boat. That was at 55 feet. He came right up the surface. And he's running. He's up. Uh, no, actually, I'm way, way up above everybody. Right? Look at all. Yeah. Until he gets to the boat. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, if we turn right, I think we'll be okay. We'll turn in. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's got some girth to him. And these fish, boy, <laughs> they just have so much power in them. Yep. And when they when they want to turn it on, they turn it on. You're up in this warm water, 55 feet. It's still in the 60s. I think they're more. I think they just. It seems like it. Yeah, like they want to get out of it. Right. They're. Oh, yes. Very good. Delightful fish to catch. Double. Yeah, I'm way over there, so. Shouldn't be me. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm over here. I don't think he's got your. Oh, oh right, something. Fish okay. Did you hit it? I don't know. Get fish on. Doubles. Doubles. Double big fish. Look at all this weed we're going through too. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, he's right here. Look at that. Oh man. All sorts of garbage. That's the other thing with these uh, rotary dodgers too. If you get it. A bunch of this uh, weed going down the line, yeah, it'll get it before it hits the lure and keep the lure valid. That's a nice fish. Yeah. That is, that is a big A. That's over 24. That could go eight, nine pounds easy. What do you think? Mm, I'd say nine. Yeah, nine. Okay. Agree with you there. Look at how fat he is. Look yeah, at he's, that beautiful he's nice fish. On. Yeah, it's just he's up there feeding. He's having a great time. Was. Well, yeah. Yeah, he's a nice fish. Yeah, that's a beauty. Okay, so he came up a little quick, so he's got some air in him still. Yeah. Yep. So we're gonna see if he wants to go home. Can here. How you feeling, big guy? You like that? You like the world of freedom for you? You gonna you gonna be able to go? Yeah. I was running a temperature probe, see what's going on down there. Very important on these fish, especially there's uh, springtime. And now in the fall, you'll see that there's a thermocline that's probably down there. I'm seeing it around 70 feet again. But this warmer water that they're up in, uh, they're after bait. That's why they're there. Uh, there's Captain Gary. Gary Edminster. The Captain proud, Gary. so experienced fisherman. Lucky enough to have him on board. Well, I wasn't very experienced now until I actually gonna time spent me. a few yeah. years on this lake with the master, and that's the guy with the camera. Yeah, so. There you go. But I appreciate the, uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the yeah. critic. Now we're tight. There's no. Yeah, he used to disputing. smoke. He used to smoke me pretty good, but now I'm nope. learning to yep. keep up He's with him. Anytime he had a jig, and he, that was probably the worst. That thing was, he did. yeah, that was, a, that was good. At least he's got a bad shoulder, so he can't keep up physically. Numbers he can. Let's get him to net a bunch of big fish, and then the cup puts him off.
This is about the average size fish we were catching in about 35 to 55 feet of water. Seemed to be a good depth at that time. Okay. Just gonna revive them. Push them back and forth. Okay, so you find the speed, you find the lure, you find a depth that's working, and you get into some fish. You want to stay on them. These fish like an area. They find whatever the bait's doing. There's a spring. Something's keeping them in an area. You want to turn tight, make circles, make figure eights, stay on top of a point that you can mark on your GPS. Beat it up until they go away. Don't leave fish. Stay on them and get some. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's heavy. Yeah, he's heavy. Got him, he's off. Well, that's this way. Once again, thanks to the Paiute Indian tribe for allowing us to share this resource and their great stewardship of the fishery, which has made it just world class. That's just fantastic. And uh, if you like the video, please hit the like. Please subscribe if you can. Certainly helps me out in my quest for keeping this thing going. Thanks.